You are exalted above the names. Hallelujah. There is no like you. Hello, a very good day to you. My name is Sister Temi Tayo. I'm a Christian content creator and I'm here once again to share from the Open Heavens Daily Devotional compiled by the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E.A. Adeboye. And the reason I'm sharing from this particular Christian book is because the Lord instructed me to do so as I prepare to enter into the year 2020. So this is my fifth year of sharing from the devotional, and that's why we call it season five. And all those videos from 2020, they are all loaded on my YouTube channel. My handle on YouTube is Temi Agedo, which is right on the screen. I encourage you to visit my channel, not only to view the old Open Heavens videos, which are a great study guide, but most importantly, to read the Open Heavens for the current day. are very important while you're on my YouTube channel. Channel. Please do not forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. And God bless you as you do now. Pastor Deboe led me to Christ in October 1997, a few years back when I was in the University of Lagos, Nigeria, in West Africa. And that gives you a few scriptures from the Bible and a memory verse, and that helps you to understand the body of the text. Praise God. So let's go straight into the daily devotional. Today is Monday, April the 15th. Monday, April the 15th. And the title of today's daily devotional is Stop Taking Nonsense. Stop taking nonsense. Praise God. <laughs> so, um, stop taking nonsense. That doesn't mean, you know, you now start behaving in a um, razzy way, you know, a razzmatazz way. But um, this relates to us and how we deal with the devil. Stop taking nonsense. And the scripture I'm reading today is taken from the book of Acts chapter 13 verses 5 to 12 you know so when you look at the topic you think that maybe that is trying to tell us that we should stop taking nonsense you know or you know but the bible says that let our gentleness be known to all men that doesn't mean that you let people walk over you but you know um you're we are slow to speak we are swift to hear very slow to anger because the wrath of a man cannot produce the righteousness of god but in this particular open heavens that is talking about um us and how we relate to the devil Stop taking nonsense that we say this far, this far and no further. Okay, we say no, no, we say no way, no way to the devil. I say no, in the name of Jesus Christ, no more of that, no more oppression, no more sickness, no more lack, no more depression. Stop taking nonsense. Now, the scripture reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 13, verses 5 to 12. Acts chapter 13, verses 5 to 12. And thus goes the reading of God's word. Stop taking nonsense. Acts chapter 13, verses 5 to 12. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. And they had also John to their minister. And when they had gone through the Isle of Patphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar Jesus which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who, for, who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. But Elimas, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, which stood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who is also called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O oh, fool of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the dead devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, so there's a time to show mercy and there's a time to stop them before they stop you. You know, so um, some people will say, oh, um, you know, why didn't they just pray for early mass, the sorcerer? So, and, and this is strange. So this is Paul and Barnabas in, on their first or second missionary journey, one of their missionary journeys. And they were going to preach the gospel to this proconsul. And... Um, this man, this was a sorcerer, so he was practicing witchcraft. He happened to be close to the deputy. 
And when he saw that, you know, the deputy called for Paul and Barnabas to come and share the gospel with him. And when Elimas, the sorcerer, a servant of Satan, you know, the Bible says, suffer not because a sorcerer is a, someone that practices witchcraft. And when he saw that, ah, the once this man becomes born again, he will be able to recognize the evil spirit at work in him. So he tried to, um, you know, this, this, to interrupt the preaching of the gospel. And this is where Paul took him down and cast a spirit of blindness on, on him. Okay? So that the proconsul could hear the word of God. You see, when we are leading people to Christ, any, we must take out anything that can hinder that person from receiving the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? And that's exactly what he did. He spoke the word and dealt with him. The Elijah way. Well, Elijah would have called fire down from heaven. But he smote him with blindness. And um, the, the strange thing about it is how did Eli, Elimas make it to become so close to the deputy? How did he find himself through, the, through politics to get to that office? You know, it's like... Um, um, the Bible says, may the counsel of Ahitophel become foolishness. That's what David prayed. So sometimes we have to, we, not sometimes, all the time we have to pray, pray for our leaders that God will deliver them from the early masses and that God will raise up Joseph's and Daniel's, amen, to be around and Nehemiah's, to be around um, people who, because this is the deputy. You know, can you imagine if you have a, a, a governor who is filled with the Holy Spirit, who has accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, he will be a burning and a shining light. And imagine if you had a leader whose uh, right hand man was is a sorcerer. You can imagine how the devil will be walking through him to confuse the leader who makes decisions concerning the nation. So, but God stepped in and Saul shut him down in the name of Jesus Christ. And cast blindness on, on him. And when the proconsul saw the deputy, when he saw what had happened, he he saw that was real the demonstration of the Holy Ghost and of power. Stop taking nonsense. Praise the Lord. And Jesus went into the temple and cast out all them that, that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold those. This is Jesus Christ, Matthew 21, 12. Is the memory verse Matthew 21 12 and Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. You know, um, the Bible says, My house shall be called a house of prayer, and they had made it a den of, of thieves. <laughs> and you know what Jesus Christ did? He just made a whip, <laughs> he made a whip, you know, and beats all of them. You know, can you imagine if God beats somebody? That person will never recover. <laughs> you know, and he drove them out. He's, and he said, the zeal and the, uh, 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 Matthew, remember the scripture that said that the zeal of the Lord's house had eaten him up. You know, he drove them out because they were doing things that were not legal to do in the house of God. And this reminds me, so this is the memory verse. You know, I just went to the temple of God and he saw the nonsense they were doing there. He, the, the shock. He just, he didn't even talk. He just took what we call in Africa Koboko, you know, and made it into a and beat all beat all of them. <laughs> when God beats somebody, that person is in trouble, you know, and he overthrew their tables, scattered all their money, you know. And it's the same thing that Nehemiah did. Nehemiah, when he had um, you know, um, you know, the spirit of God will lead you. There'll be when when Moses saw, when Moses came down from the mountain, hey, and he saw that the children of Israel had made a golden calf. The Bible says his anger grew hot. He was so angry. He was so angry. You know, oh, he said, Aaron, what did these people do to you? Aaron says, it's not me, it's the people. You know, everyone just gave one lame excuse. So what Moses did is, he, he, in his anger, he just broke the stones. He broke the molten calf into pieces, burnt it, and scattered it on the water and made the people of Israel drink it. You know, he punished them. You see, uh, thy rod and thy staff, yeah? He, the comfort, remember Psalm 23? And um, the rod is for chastening and the staff is for leading. So it depends on which side of the shepherd you fall on. 
praise God, let's go straight into the daily devotion. Stop taking nonsense. Daddy says that the many there are many Christians who say that they do not take nonsense from anybody. However, these are the same people that take nonsense from the devil. Whether you take nonsense from people or not, it is is not whether you take nonsense from people or not is not very important. What is most important is that you do not take nonsense from the devil. The Bible says in First Peter five verse eight that we should be sober, we should be vigilant because our adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, and we should resist him steadfastly. Now, I have a scripture that I sh- I am um, I. I had set aside. Okay, let's let's go on. So what what Daddy is saying here is that you know some people say, oh, I don't take any nonsense from anybody. But when it comes to the devil, you know, the devil is on rampage in their lives, and Daddy is saying these things are not so to be. Okay, so and that we should be aware that the devil is as a roaring lion, seeking, going about, seeking whom he may devour, and that we should resist him steadfastly so we must know the word of god because the only language that the devil understands is the word of god and jesus christ showed us an example when uh, satan told him to cast himself down it is written his, he said it is written that you shall you know you shall not tempt the lord your god you know, so it is written man shall not live by bread alone so we must know the word of god and we must be ready okay to deal with the devil when those temptations come with the word of god Praise God. Now, um, Daddy says, will you sit around and let him come and devour you? You should stand your ground against him and set his tail on fire so that he can run far away from you like Samson did when, uh, you know, the the Philistines tried to attack him. So in other words, you know, we, we must resist, give no place to the devil. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians, we must give no place to the devil. The Bible says, he that did get the pitch shall fall into him, and he that breaketh a hedge, the serpent shall bite. So give no, give the devil no place in, in your life, because if you do, the devil is looking for who to destroy. So don't, we must not cooperate with the devil. We must cooperate with God. You understand? Because if you break the hedge, the serpent will bite you. Okay? So we must be sober and be vigilant, because our adversary, the devil, is like a roaring lion walking about, seeking whom he may would devour. You know, and, and uh, I think we, this scripture, um, you know, when the lion wants to attack a prey, as long as they are together, he cannot attack them. So what he does, because that would be suicidal, what he does is that he looks for that one that is lingering about. So it's always good for us to go to church, very important, and be in of one mind and one spirit with the people of God. Okay. We must be, we must be active. In the service of God, okay. Uh, God said to Moses, "Let my people go that they may serve me." Okay, let my people go that they may serve me. So it's only those who are qualified to who want to serve God who are qualified to leave Egypt. Okay, so don't don't just sit down and throw a pity party for yourself. Use the word of God against the devil. And the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. The Bible says we overcame Satan by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Open your mouth wide. And God will fill it and use the word of God against the devil. Praise God. Daddy then gives a testimony. He says, one of my daughters shared a testimony some time ago. Her child was sick and they took the child to the hospital. And getting there, the doctor said that there was nothing they could do to save the child. The man said, in that case, can you refer us to another hospital? The doctor referred them. And on their way, they got stuck in terrible traffic, in a terrible tra- traffic da- jam. And while in the traffic jam, the child died. The woman said, I'm not going to take this. And after five hours on the road, she suddenly had a brain wave. She said, at least my father will call his God and his God will answer. I will call on the God of my father. And I and I even have a handkerchief that he once prayed over. So she laid the handkerchief on the child and called the child's name and commanded him to come back to life. And the child jacked awake and there was no need to go to the hospital anymore. Because the bad, you, so yes, this are um that's anointing by convection. So the Bible says um, handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the body of Paul and they were put on the sick and the demon possessed and they became healed and they became delivered. Okay. So this woman, her son was, her child was sick. She took the child to the first hospital. They said that they couldn't do anything for the child. And then she decided, she said to the doctor, refer me to another hospital. And as they were going, they got stuck in traffic and the child died in the car, you know, and, um, 
But Aldo is still in traffic. She said to herself, well, why is she just, you know, the Bible says that um, this, the prodigal son came to himself. I said, why am I suffering like this? My suffering is unnecessary. She came to herself and said, you know, why? She's not going to allow her son to just die like that. She's a Christian. Why will I let that happen? You know? So as she remembered that she had a mantle, you know, she had an, a, a handkerchief that had been blessed by her pastor. What we call a mantle, like inside the Bible. And she took that mantle and put it on the child and prayed in the name, prayed to God that and commanded the child to come back to life. And the child, child came back to life. That's faith. Because God's word works and because the anointing destroys the yoke. Okay. So, you know, then Isaac said something in Genesis 27, verse 40. And by the sword, he was talking to Esau, and by the sword shall thou live. And shall serve thy brother, and shall come to pass when thou shalt have dominion, that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. When thou shalt have dominion, thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. Jesus Christ, God has given us dominion over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt us. Jesus Christ has given us power over all the power of the enemy, and we must use the word of God. Amen. We must use the word of God. The word of God, that which is from above, is above all. The word of God is from above. And is above, the Bible says we are seated with Christ Jesus in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And you see, we must begin to use the word now. Don't wait for the evil day. Don't wait for the evil day. We must use the word of God in every situation we find ourselves. We must begin, we must, our sword must be sharp. So don't wait till the evil day and then you get to the front and you don't know what to do, okay? In every situation. Let me tell you something. As I was reading this, I, I, I began to just, my cogitation, cogitations. When people are going for major surgeries, they do a lot of praying, fasting, sowing seeds. And they come true because they, they prepared for the battle. But then sometimes they, there's just something so small. You just think, oh, no, it's nothing. No, there's nothing small. Nothing small. The devil is not joking. He's a like a roaring lion. Bible says you should be sober and be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking him whom he may devour. You may think, oh, it's just a small thing. Now, nah, now, nah, just go to hospital. No, no, no. The devil is not joking. So don't look at any small thing and think it's small. The devil is looking for a way to get into our lives to hurt us. So don't give no place, no place, not even a foot. Give no place to the devil at all, at all. Okay. Give no place to the devil. As, uh, Isaac said, when you shall have dominion, then you shall break his yoke. When you are determined not to let something evil happen, your prayers will be more fervent than usual. There are probably things in your life that the devil has been using to torment you. These things will only stop when you become determined not to take any nonsense from him again. If you have been praying gentle prayers concerning these things, it's time to use your authority in Christ and start issuing commands in your prayers. And that's what, you know, that's what Isaac was telling uh, uh, um, Esau. You know, he, he said you must be determined not to take any nonsense anymore. So uh, Isaac said to Esau, he said, when you shall have dominion, you shall break his yoke from off your neck. Okay? So, you know, we must now... Now start exercising your power. It's not until prayer, problem comes before you now start praying. The Bible says we must remember the Lord in the days of our youth before the evil day comes. And the evil day will come. Whether you, It doesn't matter who you are. Whether you're black or white, man or woman, boy or girl, the evil day will come. So we must prepare to meet our... We must prepare, arise. Prepare and arise. Okay? Prepare and arise. Be praying now. We prepare for war in the time of peace. You must, however, submit yourself to God first before you can successfully stand against up to the devil. Before you can su successfully stand up to the devil. James 4, 7 says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and will flee from you. If you are sure... Okay, so what that is saying here is that, <laughs> you know, this the demon said to... The devil said to the seven sons of Siva, Siva in the book of Acts, he said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? You can't be playing, putting one leg in the world and then one leg in the church and think that you can bind the devil. No, not possible. We must submit ourselves to God and then we'll be able to resist the devil and then he'll be able to he'll flee. 
Okay? So, like those demons said, they said, Jesus, I know Paul. You, 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 who are you? So, you can't cast out devils when you have been in bed with the devil. Do you understand what I mean? So, that's why the Bible says we should submit ourselves to God. Submit ourselves, therefore, to God. You know, we must be in constant fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We must... um. Put away the sins that so easily ensnare us. Fight the good fight of faith. Be studying our Bible. We must be serving the Lord our God with all our might, all our strength. Okay? Submit ourselves to God and then we'll be able to resist the devil and he will flee. If you are sure of your right standing with God, when you resist the devil, he will run away from you. Stop taking nonsense from him. Amen. Stop taking nonsense from the devil. Hallelujah. Now, the action point is command the devil to take his dirty hands off our lives and everything that concerns us now. The Bible says when we resist him, he will flee. There is, Satan has been, there's a program inside Satan that he has no control of, that when we resist him, he must flee. When we resist him, he must flee. He has that program, that software in him. Okay? That when we resist him in the name of Jesus Christ, with the word of God, he must flee. Amen. Let us pray. Daddy says, command the devil, command to take his hands off our lives. Let's use our finances as an example. So let's say we need some money now. We're going to claim that money. We're going to command the devil to get his hands off our finances. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you because you have given us power over all the power of the enemy. Father, in the name of Jesus, we command the windows of heaven to be opened unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. And Satan, we command you in the name of Jesus Christ, get your hands off our finances. Get your hands off our health and off our marriages and off our of, of our children in the name of Jesus Christ. And in the name of Jesus, we command ministering spirits to bring forth the finances that we need in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We declare, we enforce divine health in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Okay, I've gone further than I planned. Thank you very much. God bless you why, for being on my channel. And while you're on my channel, please don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. And for this series, we will have a beautiful day. And God bless you.